I had a short round on it. Did you guys see that? That was my nickname in college. Not because I look like him. Not in college. No, not in college. I never went. It's in life because I'm short and round. Yes. Thank you. Oh, but here's my impression of Winnie the Pooh at the strip club. Ooh. <laughs> the, the, the spearmint rhino. Oh, the spearmint rhino. Ooh, sounds really fun and delightful. Excuse me, miss. And there's a stripper right there. Oh, 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 there's a stripper right Excuse me, what's your name? Marianne, I would have picked you as a thumper. <laughs> Marianne, you give me a, a rumbly in my tumbly. And by rumbly, I mean boner. And by tumbly, I mean pants. Only the two doesn't wear pants. Speaking of not wearing pants, coming to the stage is a man who needs no introduction, but I'm gonna give him one anyway. He is the person who started this whole sketchy comedy show. He does voices too, he draws, he does it all, sometimes in the nude, and let's hope he's wearing pants. Please give it up for Ron Yevnelli. Hey, it's 11-11, everybody, make a wish. I wish that the audience will laugh at my jokes tonight. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, so I hope you didn't squeeze all the Star Wars juice out of you because I, I want to talk about it too. Hence the T-shirt tonight. Um, so uh, you know, uh, I gotta say I gotta beef with George Lucas. He's fucking with Star Wars again. You know, he thought he could slip it past us because he created the new Star Tours ride, which is awesome because we get to like run over Jar Jar Binks, and that's really cool. <laughs> So we thought everyone would be so happy about that that they'd ignore the changes he made in Return of the Jedi, again. So like now, now the Ewoks are blinking and, uh, and like Leia's bikini's on tighter, okay, that's not so bad. But, um, but he added lines in the end, like when, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, uh, he added lines in the end when, when like Darth Vader turns back to the good side and kills the Emperor, right? That was such a powerful scene when it's all silent. Like, he doesn't say a word, he just turns and he grabs the Emperor and throws him the fuck down that, that hole, you know? But now, George Lucas must think we're all stupid or something. He's like, I need to explain it to everyone. So, like, while, while the Emperor is electrocuting Luke with his fingers, right? Darth Vader stands there and he says, no. And then he picks up the Emperor and throws him down and says, no! Swear to God, look it up on YouTube, it's true. I can't imagine that James Earl Jones went in on that deal willingly. I can't imagine he did. He must have been tricked. I, I bet the phone conversation went something like this. Uh, hi, uh, hi, James. This is George Lucas. Uh, long time no talk. Listen, uh, I'm revamping uh, Return of the Jedi again, and I want you to do some lines. Uh, what do you say? No. <laughs> uh, come on, please. Orson Welles would have done it. No. Okay, thanks. That's all I need. Bye. <laughs> Damn it. And just for fun, some of you guys heard this already, but whatever. Here's my impression of James Earl Jones as a black comedian in the 1980s. Ready? <laughs> White people be saying shit like, hey, give me some more mayonnaise in my tuna casserole. And brothers be all like, yo. I want me some more of that Roscoe's chicken and waffles. <laughs> and white people be walking like this. Look at me. I have a stick on my ass because I'm white. And brothers do it this way. Yo, I got soul. I'm super bad. And white people be punishing their children like this. Little Johnny, you go sit in the corner and think about what you did. And brothers do it this way. Simba. <laughs> you never need to disobey me. And what's worse? You put Nala in danger. <laughs> Your only job was to look after Akeem. How did you let him come to such a pass? You want to confine yourself to our suite at the Waldorf Astoria. And I want you to bathe him thoroughly. Thank you, yes. Thank you. Fucking George Lucas, man. Ne next time he releases re it, he's gonna like probably take James Earl Jones out and give the part to Ray Romano or something, you know? Luke, I'm your father. I changed your diapers when you were a baby. You had a twin sister, Leia, remember? Yeah, what is it with twins anyway? They're really bad. Imagine one toddler running around, another one following him, saying, yeah, jump off that. Yeah, go ahead, knock that over. 
Yeah, throw that across the room. No, but do it with the force. You're a Jedi. You don't have to touch it. Uh, uh, whatever. Whatever, I'm over it. Uh, as we all, you know, some of you film geeks in the crowd, how many film geeks here tonight? Cool, represent, yeah. So you guys might know, uh, Orson Welles was the first choice to be Darth Vader, right? So here is, uh, here is Orson Welles as a black comedian in the 1980s, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not actually doing Darth Vader, I'm just having trouble breathing. I, I overeat a little, you see. Uh, White people be saying, give me some more mayonnaise in my tuna casserole. <laughs> no, add even more mayonnaise. No, even more. Come on, dollop it on there, good. Now, you know what? Just pour the whole jar on. I'm very hungry. <laughs> I've got to go anyway. I, I've, I've got to record the Transformers movie tomorrow. <laughs> I'm playing the biggest toy. <laughs> Prepare the standard rich and famous contract for Kermit the Frog and company. Yes. Thank you. For the one guy who gets it. Thank you. Right. Yeah, so uh, I, we all, a lot of us do impressions here. I love to do them, uh, but I like to arrive at them organically. You know, I prefer to come to them from an honest place inside myself. And uh, here's how I came up with one. Um, I had really painful hernia surgery two years ago. Yeah, it was awful. And when, when I, hernia recovers? Yeah, all right, awesome. High five with our inguinal hernias, right? Yeah, uh, let's bump hernias, right? Uh, but, uh, but the doctor said when, you're, when you recover from the hernia surgery, the faster way to do it is to get up and walk down your own hallway once an hour, which is a lot harder than it sounds, you know, because you just got operated on down there. But, uh, but when I did, uh, you know, I had my hand, one on each hip, like I was holding a couple of gun holsters, you know. I could really use the mic neck now, but it's not worth it. But just imagine I have both hands on my hips, right? And, uh, and you're walking like real slow, more kind of dragging your legs than taking actual steps like that. And you're uh, moaning and groaning in pain real slow. And pretty soon you turned into John Wayne there, Peter. John Wayne wasn't so tough. He just had a hernia. He was probably out doing the recovery walk one day when a producer spotted him and said, Hey kid, keep walking like that and I'll make you a star. He said, oh, Well, sorry sir, you see I don't really talk or walk like that, I've just had an operation. Alright, then forget it, I'll get somebody else. No, no, wait, I can talk like that. Just put me on a horse. That ought to hurt like hell. And the rest is Hollywood history. Thank you all. Thanks. Good crowd tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yes. Awesome. A crowd with high self-esteem. Very good. You deserve that. You deserve that. You're good. So, uh, I'm going to change tack a little bit, uh, tell you a little about myself. I know you're tired of hearing about my medical problems, but uh, I'm going to tell you about one more I have. Uh, I recently found out that I have ADD. Yeah. Tension Deficit Disorder. What was I talking about? Pancakes, right? They're delicious. With maple syrup and butter, but uh, but anyway, ADD, yeah, so I got it, and apparently I've had it my whole life. It's not something you can catch, right? It's not like viral. It's not like I was walking down one day, you know, paying attention to things well, and then uh, and then Tom Arnold came and breathed on me, and all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is that? I can't, under I don't understand anything. No, it, it doesn't work like that. You're, you're either born with it, or you have like a head injury or something, you know, but... Uh, but, um, but, you know, apparently uh, the doctors and my parents knew about it when I was a kid and didn't tell me. And they, didn't, they decided not to do anything about it because the only cure at the time was Ritalin, which is an amphetamine. And uh, my mom didn't want her six-year-old son to be on amphetamines. And I don't blame her for that. That's, uh, that's, that's fair. But I'm on them now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, Adderall is a miracle drug. You know, uh, suddenly the only uh, side effect I've noticed is that I've lost weight without diet or exercise. How awesome is that? So let's see what the benefits are. I can tighten my belt all the way now. Uh, I can play basketball. I can do my taxes and I can listen to people when they fucking talk to me. How cool is that? That may not sound like a big deal to some of you, but to me, I feel like a mutant. I feel like I've evolved into another species. Like I'm one of the X-Men now or Spider-Man, you know? It even has its own theme song, Adderall, Adderall, friendly neighborhood, Adderall, gives you focus when you need, cause it is a form of speed, look out, here comes the Adderall, yeah, thank you. So what was I talking about again? 
<laughs> Waffles. Yeah, right, they're delicious too. With maple syrup and butter, yeah, I love them. You know in Canada they call them wallops? Okay, that's not true, but doesn't it sound like it could be? Can you picture a Canadian guy saying that? Like, hey, I like maple syrup on my wallops because I'm from Canada. We do two things in Canada. We play hockey and we eat wallops. And then we listen to Alanis Morissette. Because she's Canadian and she likes wallops too. Yeah, but she likes them vegan style, eh? All right. Squeezed all the syrup out of that joke. That's fine. Uh, so what else can I tell you? I got my little cheat sheet here. You're not supposed to do this, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, international. Something international. International. Where are you from, sir? Russia. Russia. Okay, cool. I got a joke for your people. Uh, okay, very good. Thank you for that segue, my Russian brother. I am of Russian descent myself. Uh, my ancestors came here from Russia a hundred years ago. Uh, so what I'm about to say comes from love. It's, uh, it's from within, okay? So just, just bear with me. Um, I, I, there's a lot of different ethnic groups in LA. I love them. You know, I grew up in Miami where there's two ethnic groups, uh, Cubans and more Cubans, you know? But, uh, <laughs> But in LA, you got everybody. You got Armenians, Mexicans, Russians, Filipinos, Thai, Ethiopians. Uh, you, got, you got them from everywhere. And uh, I noticed like each group has their own unique BO. Uh, <laughs> the Russians are the grand champions of BO. To the point where I don't even have to be in the same room with a Russian to smell them. I just have to be where a Russian was five minutes ago. Because they leave a stink ghost where they were standing. You don't know what I mean? Get into an elevator on Sunset Boulevard in any apartment building and you'll smell one. It, it's, it's about the same size and shape as the person who left it, and it smells like a combination of rancid garlic, blue cheese, and anger. You know, it's, uh, love it, you know, but, uh, yeah, cigarettes too, thank you. Yeah, it's very smoky. Uh, see, he knows. Um, but I, I forgive the Russians, I, they get a pass for that because, you know, growing up in Russia, if they took a shower more than once a year, the KGB would bust down their door and haul them off to the gulag, you know, for wasting government water. Um, but, but, you know, hey, that almost sounds like a Yakov Smirnov joke that way, doesn't it? In Soviet Russia, you take shower more than once a year, KGB breaks down door and hauls you off the gulag. In America, you can shower three times a day and nothing happens, except you smell good. Um, so like I said, the, the, Russians, uh, the Russians get a pass. But here's a group that does not get a pass, and this is also coming from within, okay? I am one of you comic book geeks. Do not get a pass for smelling bad. You guys gotta fucking shower more, okay? I, I went to Comic-Con the last two years, and you, you walk in the hallway and just get hit with the smell of nerd. It, uh, you cannot avoid it, and that has its own unique combination. That's like a combination of like stale corn chips and, uh, and like the plastic from old Halloween costumes. <laughs> And sadness, you know. <laughs> Take a shower and you'll be happy. Maybe you'll even have sex once in a while. Just a thought, instead of reading about it. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for being a good sport, Russian guy. You're awesome. Round of applause for the Russian guy. Okay. Alright, so uh, just to show you that, uh, that I'm a good sport about that, I'm going to make fun of my own people a little bit. I said I'm part Russian, but uh, my dad is actually from uh, Israel. Any Israelis in the crowd tonight? No? Okay, cool. So I'll tell you, Israel is a small country in the Middle East uh, with people from all over the world, and, uh, and it's great. My dad's from there. Uh, if you want to meet some Israelis, go to Ventura Boulevard and uh, stand on the street corner and throw a rock. You'll probably hit one. <laughs> So uh, that'll bring back some bad memories for them, probably about like Palestinians and shit like that. So maybe throwing a rock isn't a bad idea. Just say you're, I don't know, looking for a bargain and they'll come and help you, you know? Uh, and it's okay, I can say that. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, my, my dad's from Israel and, uh, you know, I grew up with a unique kind of combination of cultures. My mom's from Brooklyn, so I, I grew up with two like very arrogant cultures in, in my family. Like, New Yorkers think they're so fucking cool. They think they're the best. So like, then why'd you leave? You know, like, no matter what you're talking about, it's better back in New York. You're not sure what I mean? Take any New Yorker out for pizza, and I guarantee you they'll say this. You know, this ain't bad for where we are, but back in New York, they'd laugh them out of Brooklyn with pizza like this. It'd be nothing. Forget about it. It's the water. You see, it's always about the water. They put the water in the dough, and that makes the pizza better. Try a bagel or a pizza in New York, it's better. But they don't just brag about food, it's anything. Like, you know, silly things. Like I heard a New Yorker say, I stepped in a pile of dog shit today, I just wiped it off the bottom of my shoe like nothing. Back in New York, that shit would have been up to my knees. Forget about it. It's the water. 
see the dogs drink the New York water, it makes them shit more. Forget about it. And Israelis are the same, man. They're very arrogant about the fact that they're from Israel. You know, I grew up with that. And they're tough, too. They're not like the typical, like, wimpy Woody Allen, like, America, American Jews you meet. They're like, my dad's a badass. Like, he'd wake me up every morning like, Ronnie, get up. I don't want to fight with you. Look at you, lazy, you fat. You don't want to get the garbage out. You don't want to walk the dog. And the dog piss and shit all over the house. When I was your age on kibbutz, I had to wake up every morning to harvest the falafel while the Arabs attack us and the locals swarm overhead. And we had the weapons so they trained the chickens to lay grenades instead of eggs. And we threw those at the terrorists and threw the terrorists at the locals and you don't want to go to school. Dad, it's Saturday, I don't care. In Israel we go to school every day, nine days a week. It's only seven days in a week, Dad, not in Israel. We have nine, now get up. And how could I argue with that? I really couldn't, you know, but... Uh, I kid because I love, my dad's a good guy, he's lived in America for over 30 years, uh, since before I was born, and yet there's only so much room in his brain, because I'm over 30, see? Um, so let's say over 40 years, but then if I say that, audiences think I'm over 40, which I'm not. Uh, so I don't want to give you the wrong idea. Let's say he's been here since the 60s, and then I was born 10 years later. Math, yeah, see? You get a math lesson and comedy. Um, so, uh, you know, and yet, He's been here that long, and yet there's only so much room in his brain for English. Like, when he can't think of the word for something, he won't necessarily switch over to the Hebrew or even mispronounce the English. He'll just make a word up that doesn't exist in any language. He'll say, Ronnie, give me the kapuchki. The what? The kapichko, right there, in front of you. What, what, what do you say? The chamkulo, right there. You mean the spoon? Yeah, the zambula. Dad, it's called a spoon. How long have you lived here? You just tell audience all the math uh, before you're born. And you don't know the word spoon. Yeah, kapuchki. No, spoon. But it's an all-purpose word. It's not just spoon. It's, it's a noun, it's a verb, it's even a sentence fragment. So, like my dad will say, Ronnie, come on, it's time to a kapuchki. Which can mean anything. It's time to clean my room, it's time to go to the store, it's time to invade Lebanon. We've done all three of these at kapuchki. Sometimes all at once. So every time my room gets clean, the Lebanese people are unhappy. I don't know why. But uh, I, I would be remiss as a guy who does impressions if I didn't leave you with this. Uh, my, my best impression, of course, is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, and every comic does it, and, but I do it better. Fuck them. It's all right. <laughs> but I'm sad, you know, I'm sad he's not the governor anymore because for the last eight years I had comedy gold because he was an officer. No matter what he did, I could make fun of it because he did it badly. But I don't care. I voted for him because it was good for my career. Yeah. yeah. But now you know he's out of the, he's out of the, I was about to switch back to my own voice there. Uh, now you know he's out of the limelight, I have to find things to make fun of. Uh, like the recent scandal he had with the bastard child out of wedlock he had with the maid. My only question is like, how did Maria Shriver not notice? How did she not get suspicious when the maid's baby bench pressed a thousand pounds? And shot laser beams out of his eyes. Surely she must have thought something was up. Then again, she's a Kennedy. Women are trained to look the other way in that family. And things like that. Oh, what do you mean, oh, what do you care? Since when are you Kennedys? Do you know any Kennedys personally? What have they ever, ever done for you? Thank you. Uh, really, you sad about that? Okay. Okay, I hate that I made you sad, but you applauded, so that's fine. And I will leave you on that. Thank you, you've been a great crowd.